Back in November-ish of 2021, feels like so long ago, I was commissioned to do a book inspired by the spell book in Practical Magic, and that led to me creating this. And I am really proud of how that particular book came out, and I really love it, but I also had to get rid of it because it was a commission piece. So today I want to try to make another one. There are a few things that I want to change about it, but the generalized vibe I think is going to be the same. The thing with this book is it is huge, which is fine, but it does create some complications in terms of particularly covering material because usually pre-cut stuff is really made for typical book sizes and I am too poor to buy things in bulk. So this book was covered in leather, which is what is preferred, but leather is very expensive. I was able to afford it in this case because, you know, it was commissioned, so I was getting paid to do it, but seeing as I have no guaranteed buyer for this one, um, I want to do this as cheaply as possible. So I still want to do legitimate leather. I know vinyl is sort of that cheap alternative to leather, but I have used it in the past and I don't like it. It doesn't feel quite right to hold and it's a lot more susceptible to damage. So my first challenge is going to be finding leather that is affordable and looks how I want it to look. So I was thinking about going shopping at some thrift stores and seeing what I can find, if there are any like leather coats or jackets that would work really well. So we're gonna start with that and then we'll get into the actual bookmaking. So um, let's go shopping. We are at the thrift store. I have a few thrift stores on my list. This is the one I'm most hopeful for. So really what I'm looking for is a large enough coat or jacket that I can basically have one single piece of leather from it to cover a huge book. That's my hope. We're gonna go in and see what they've got. The answer is not a lot. Uh, apparently in the summer they don't really keep their coats out. Well, the quest is not going well. Um, we got Starbucks. I found a couple of purses that I don't think are quite big enough for this project, but I will definitely be using in a different project at some point. So I'm giving up. I'm buying leather. It's not what I wanted to do, but that's what we're doing today. To the hobby store. It is craft store leather, so it's not super amazing leather. It is functional though. In the meantime, I'm gonna send it to Kendra in the kitchen for working on the paper. Let's go. Welcome to my kitchen. I have about 180 pages right here, 60 of which are 140 pound watercolor, and about 125 of which are 70 pound sketchbook paper. All in all, <laughs> it's already a lot of paper. Basically, as this book comes together, I'll be mixing sketchbook paper and with the watercolor, and then this will make both halves of the book. So what I need to do today is color this. Take some leftover tea and some leftover coffee, kind of mix it all together, and then just kind of soak each individual sheet. That'll help give it kind of an age look. Let's get started. It has been 2,000 years, but finally all of the paper is stained. So with the 70 pound drawing paper, there were some casualties. I don't know exactly how many I lost, but I want to say it was a ballpark of five or six, which is not terrible. With the casualties, it was mostly the paper would kind of get stuck together because it's flimsy and it would just sort of like grab each other and then it would dry that way and then I tried to pull them apart and did not go well. But that whole coffee staining process took the better part of three days, which means we're officially on to day four of this project and we barely even got it started. What I want to do right now is start folding my signatures together. So my signatures are going to be 
Four sheets of paper total, it's gonna be two of the watercolor and two of the lighter weight. And right now, if you paid attention to the earlier part of this video and you are any good at math, you might be thinking, hey Kendra, isn't there a lot more of that lighter weight paper than there is of the watercolor paper? To which I would say you are absolutely correct. So to kind of look at the book from Practical Magic, there's kind of two books in one. You have sort of the main thick boy, and then you have the much thinner, um, thin boy, and they both kind of open separately from each other. So the watercolor paper is going to exclusively exist within the thick boy, partially because the paper itself is really thick and so will add quite a bit of thickness, and then that thinner portion will just be the drawing paper. So what I'm going to do is make a whole bunch of signatures. In my case, signatures are going to be four individual sheets of paper folded in half all together. So let's get folding. Overall, I have 30 signatures that include the watercolor, pretty thick, and then 15 signatures, again, four sheets per signature of just the drawing paper. So this will go on the thinner side. I am thinking about taking probably about five of those signatures out. We'll just kind of see. I'm going to put these in my book press. I'm probably going to have to do this in sections because there's just so much here, but just to sort of flatten this out because right now where that's folded is really thick and it's not really giving me a good sense of how thick the final book is going to be. Once these are flattened I'm going to measure them out. They are obviously 9 inches tall because they were originally 9 by 12. But I'm going to measure, mark, and stab my binding holes, do some sewing, and then I'll meet you back when we're ready to start working on the cover. So let's get to the montage. because I bought this exact leather before from the exact same store and there was a giant hole in it um, which is not great when you need you know to go through the middle of it so far this is looking pretty promising and very large um, disregard on the very large there's actually two pieces here so there's this one and then this one so there's no hole in the middle which is good so what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay my two books out here, kind of flop this over. Proof of concept here. <laughs> In the meantime, I need to cut and glue some chipboard on both sides of both of my text blocks, figure out what I'm doing for end pages, and then once that's figured out, we can actually attach it to the leather. I just wanted to make sure that I had the materials I needed before I got to that point. So let's attach some covers. So she opens fully. You can flip all the way to the back to find the little book. And then you can open them both at the same time. I'm really excited. This is turning out really well. This is obviously still a little bit flimsy. 
here, but it will kind of sturdy up once we get the leather on there, which is honestly, I think, the next step. The only thing I'm not super excited about is how much this spine sticks out compared to this text block, but it lines up with the cover, so it's fine. Like, I don't know what else I would expect considering it's attached to the cover. Why would it not line up with the cover? I don't know. But at this point, it's all about those finishing touches. We'll put the leather on, and then once we get that, we'll put in the end sheets. The main reason why I'm holding off is just because I don't want the end sheets to get ruined by the glue. So let's break out the leather. So when I did that clip, I fully intended on like having this fun little transition where I would bring you back once the cover was done. Um, however, I did that clip at about 1.30. It is now 4.30 and we're still not done. I will say it has nothing to do with any complications with the cover. It really is just, it takes so much time. And I'll say the weird thing when it comes to bookbinding is it simultaneously takes so much time and yet not that much time because it's not like I've been sitting here working on it continuously for the past three hours, but there's a degree to which I need to let the glue dry before I can continue on. And so for every step, I'm letting the glue dry and then doing the next step and then letting the glue dry and then doing the next step. I'm probably going to be working on this for the rest of the night. Again, just kind of off and on. I still need to glue around this edge and I haven't even started on this edge yet. I've already trimmed around the spine to make sure that that leather folds in nice and cleanly. This is definitely one of those slow feeling parts of the book. Like there's nothing about book biting that's fast. In any case, I'm gonna finish getting this wrapped up tonight and then I'll meet you tomorrow to finish her up. So she is all glued, all of the turn-ins are turned in, it's looking really good. From the outside, it looks like a real book, it's just the inside that we need to still cover some of those guts. So the thing is, normally when I do projects like this, I will use scrapbook paper, usually like a scrapbook cardstock that's from one of these kits of papers, which works really well for a standard size book. However, while I might be able to make a 12 by 12 kind of work here, um, a 12 by 12 is not going to work in here. So I have these rolls of paper, which is great and all, except I've realized that the plain paper I got is very, very sparkly. And any of the non hyper sparkly papers that I got are all animals, like this one's a narwhal. Dinosaur bones. And this roll is literally two sheets of the same paper that at first glance looks really pretty. Um, it's all dogs, which is pretty on brand for me, honestly. I could have sworn I had more like plain basic paper, but apparently I don't. <laughs> and I don't really have a paper store near me that just sells rolls of like handmade paper nor do I have the equipment or the time to try to make my own paper, especially to make it look the way I want it to. I'm going to do some more digging just to see if I have any other rolls, but I think we're going with the narwhal. It's a little bit more toned down. I wasn't loving the white. This kind of has a naturally aged vibe to it. There are obviously narwhals, but they're not super aggressively there. Measure and cut off sections that will fit where I need them to. The other thing that I like about this is there is kind of the ghost of the pattern on the other side, which will make it look a little bit better as end pages, which will make it look a little bit better than just having a blank sheet. Anyways, I'm going to stop talking and we're going to cut to the montage. Okay. <laughs> It's 
done. Let's take a look at the final result and then we'll come back and do some final thoughts. First of all, I love her. She is so thick. She's hefty. I feel like I could do some magic spells and then somebody runs up to me and just whack them across the head. Some sort of reflection thoughts. First of all, coffee staining took forever. If she wasn't so thick, I don't think it would have taken so long, but because there are so many pages. And I did this during the summer when it's not super humid, but it was a little humid, more humid than it would have been in winter. Um, it just took forever to dry. The leather, I am a little disappointed with. Like, it looks fine, it's great, it's sturdy, it's gonna hold up. But she thick. And the issue with thick leather is it kind of gets in its own way when working in such a tight space. So my corners are a little messier than I would like them to be. I kind of love the Norwals. I realized as I was sort of measuring that there are a lot of raw edges and I really liked that about this paper, so I didn't want to lose that. So what I did was I just folded instead of cutting the paper and then moistened it on the fold and then it just sort of tore nicely apart. I think recording this process also helped because the first time I did this, I had no idea what I was doing and I wasn't able to go back and look at my thought process. There is one key difference with the construction of this book versus the last one, and that is the attached spine. So the first time I did this, the spine was actually not really attached. The only thing that kept the big text block with the cover was this side here. I'm not really sure why I did that. It's one of those things where I kind of wish that I had recorded that process so I would know why I decided to build it that way. I think what it came down to was I wanted the whole book to be able to sit flat instead of being sort of angled like this. I think this one's a little bit more accurate to the movie because of that. If I ever do this project again, I think I want to hand make my own paper because the coffee staining does a really nice job of giving it an aged look, but I also feel like if I made my own paper, I could get those nice raw edges, deckled edges would really enhance this, but this is a lot of paper to try to do a faux deckle on. Definitely if I can get access to thinner leather or if I can get access to tools to be able to pare it down. The thing with leather is it requires very specific, very sharp tools that are often kind of expensive and I don't work with leather enough for it to really be justifiable. That's also where if I could have gotten a jacket that would have worked, that leather would have been quite a bit thinner and would have probably worked a lot better with what I needed it to do. That's not to say it wouldn't come with its own complications, but it would have avoided the complications that I did have. So overall, I'm really happy. I will say this project does make me excited to do more leather bound books because even as simple as this cover looks, it's beautiful. 10 years on YouTube and I still don't know how to close out a video. Like, comment, subscribe, share with your friends. I don't know. Let me know in the comments what you want to see me make next or what you want to learn more about because I'm open to doing anything. My phone is dinging. And tune in next week for more fun, creative things. Until then, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!